Hi guys, this is Adrian from Squash 7 Days. If you haven't already heard about the beef brewing between John Macon, the world number 11 squash player, and his former coach Rob Owen, just keep watching this video to find out what did both of them say recently in this latest chapter of their turbulent story together. If you are a squash coach or any kind of coach, the relationships of coaches and players sometimes do not end amicably. And even if they do, one of the parties involved might feel some kind of way. John Macon and Rob Owen have a very complicated personal relationship. They used to work together, Macon was Owen's player, but that part of their story together stopped about four years ago. Rob Owen, who is currently the coach of Paul Cole and some other players as well, went on the N Squash podcast hosted by Jerry Gibson. And well, did he have some things to say about Joel Macon. Macon and even Macon's family members, which resulted in the Welsh player putting out a statement in which he addresses some of the things that were said by Owen on the podcast. The host asked Rob Owen that Joel Macon left your stable about the time Paul Cole joined. When Paul arrived, did Joel felt he wanted to go elsewhere? Which is, of course, a question, but it does kind of suggest the answer. A tiny spoiler here, Macon denies that was the reason why he left Rob Owen. Rob Owen also didn't clearly indicate that was the reason, but he had some pretty harsh things to say about Macon nonetheless. What were some of Rob Owen's remarks? One of those things is how confident Rob Owen is in himself. He even says it in the interview that people know he's very confident. And that's why he says stuff like, if John Macon was still working with me, he would be where Paul Cole is now. Certainly, he would be much better than he is now. That's obvious. When I coach Macon, he beat the world number one, number two, and number three. He's not doing that now, certainly not on a regular basis. Might not sound very classy, but it uh, just shows a lot of belief in his own skills. He kind of mixes the good stuff with the bad. He says, I enjoyed working with Joel. I have respect for him on the squash side of things. He's one of the toughest people I know. But then he mixes it with a bit of sour truth. Many people told me I'm wasting my time. But I always had faith in Joel because he was so determined. I put hundreds, thousands of hours into him. The overconfidence is coming back if you can't tell. Without me, Joe would get to 50 in the rankings, but I very much doubt he would have got to 30. And that's not me saying it. It's 8, 9 people, top coaches who said that, who I've talked to. Well, the problematic thing is, you can always say, well, I've talked to, you know, it's, it's not me. A lot of people said that those were good people and they know what they're talking about. But I think if those were the only things that Owen uh, said, Macon would just let it be. Because someone like Owen saying that Macon wouldn't make it to the top 30, I can assure you, just, just gives the Welshman fuel. But then comes the part that's uh, more controversial, especially when we're going to go to the Macon statement. Because Rob Owen said, I looked after Joel Macon, I fed him, I fed his family. But I didn't get a word from Joel, not a word from his family, a word of gratitude after they stopped working together. And he goes on to say, you never know what people are like until you don't coach them. Yeah, the part about uh, Rob Owen feeding uh, Joel making and feeding his family especially is what made uh, Joel making put out a statement in which he says... I had no real intention of talking about any of this because it ended years ago. Unfortunately, Rob still won't let it go and feels the need to slate me publicly despite having discussed these things already. Mentioning my family was completely out of order and says a lot about him. After that, I thought a few things needed to be explained. Rob Owen says I fed his family, but making explains... My family have had very little to do with Rob at any point. Going for food with him once in the five years I worked with him. 
This is the sort of manipulation that happens constantly, making it sound as if he is helped out in some ways out of generosity and has had nothing in return. This is not true, along with numerous other things that were said. Also, a big part of Owen's rant about making and maybe a bit about other players was, you know, how ungrateful they are and how he's doing so much for them. Uh, I think he even says he didn't, he never charged Macon. I'm saying maybe because sadly the audio quality uh, of the podcast is not so great. I think it's an online conversation or something. So it's sometimes hard to be 100% sure, but I'm like 75% sure that Rob Owen is on the record in that podcast saying that he never charged Macon. The only problem here is that Macon's side of the story is a bit different. So Joel says, when we worked together, the amount he charged everyone wasn't a lot, as he will be quick to tell you, but I paid for every session I had, despite what was said. So this would be a pretty big red flag about Rob Owen, if he's going public about saying that he worked without charging making, but making says that he paid for everything. And then making addresses the Paul Cole rumor. I've explained this to Rob clearly, but he feels the need to blame it on Paul. As poor as I thought that was from Rob and mainly done for his own benefit, it still isn't what happened. I've always had no issues with Paul. I rate highly what he's achieved and the work he's put in. So Rob Owen stated a couple of times in the interview that he thought that bringing Paul Cole in would be brilliant for Joel Macon because they could work together. But as you can see, Macon thought that was, you know, mainly selfish and that Rob Owen uh, just wanted to work with another up and coming player. I think we won't exactly know how that went down, but Macon seems convinced that that just was not the reason why he decided to stop working with Owen. Owen also says that he always thought about John Macon as his number one player, and this is what he said to Paul Cole at the start. And the plan was for them to get to number one and number two in the world together. And he believes uh, Joe Mankin would have done it if he stayed there, if they worked together. And he even said that when I worked with Joel, he was homeless and beat the number one and number two and number three players in the world. Now, Mankin does not directly address that part. He does point to a to a sort of toxicity that he, I think, felt from working with Rob Owen and when trying to get out of that relationship because he said that being honest and leaving Rob Owen impacted his relationships with people that also Owen is involved with. It impacted, you know, the relationships with numerous sponsors, but he But Macon says that as tough as that has been, he would have rather lost that than have any involvement with Rob Owen. That tells you really a lot. And this is why in this he said, he said, I do believe Macon more. Because if you are ready to lose some sponsors just not to be around someone, then, you know, that someone must have a very bad influence on you or or the reasons behind that have to be pretty serious. Making goes on to say that Rob Owen is still attempting to have a negative impact on my career four years after I finished working with him, which shows just how bitter Rob Owen is. Some other people have distanced themselves also and have their own issues, but that's up to them to go and talk about it. So to the ungrateful part, uh, Rob Owen says that it's a joke that Joe Macon never mentions the work that he did with Owen. But Macon hits back at him saying that if you look back at his interviews from the period that they were working together, you can always hear the praises for his uh, coach. And this would probably continue, but as Macon says, the things that Rob Owen said about me personally since we worked together mean that, you know, regardless of the work, I'm just not going to call him to catch up, which is uh, pretty understandable. 
were uh, numerous other digs at uh, Macon in that Rob Owen interview. He says that Macon will probably look back in 10 years and say, you know what, Rob helped me a bit. Owen says it's a selfish sport and players need to say thank you a bit more. And in general, I would agree with that assessment. But I think also some coaches should maybe say less, especially about players they haven't worked with in almost five years now. Paraphrasing what Owen said about players, that you never know what they're like until you don't coach them. Well, sadly, that also applies to coaches. Not every coach handles losing a player, especially such a talented, determined player as Joel Macon. With grace, and I think as showcased here, Rob Owen is definitely one of those coaches Rob Owen mentioned the importance of solo practice, that he used to do solo four or five hours a week when he was a player. He knows how to, I guess, hit a very good drive. He must know how to hit a good drop shot because, you know, he taught it to Paul Cole, which many of us thought was impossible seeing, you know, the earlier stages of his career. So Rob Owen knows how to do all those things. So how about now, maybe give some space in your schedule and maybe try to find some time to work on, you know, personal relationships, uh, showing gratitude. You did talk a lot about gratitude. It should go both ways. I believe Joel also put a lot into working with you and his incredible rise during that period also must have helped you uh, get more players on board. You know, even Paul Cole, who was a very similar player at that point, as far as styles went. So maybe him seeing the work you're doing with Macon allowed you to be the coach of a player that reached the world number one ranking. So if you do get a chance to get in front of a microphone the next time and someone does ask you about John Macon, how about it's you that says thank you just a bit more. As for John Macon, keep putting the work in and I hope you won't have to address your ex-coach again. Thank you for listening guys, this was Adrian from Squash 7 Days. Uh, you can find some links in the description to the whole making statement and the in squash podcast. And obviously, please let me know in the comments uh, how have your relationships with coaches ended, or maybe your coach. So tell me about your players leaving you or just moving on. If that was a positive, negative experience, do you have any advice for, well, I think mainly Rob Owen, but maybe also something for Joel Macon. Thank you and I'll see you soon.